James, magician, songwriter, um, director, producer. Is there anything else you would like to add to the list? I'm a terrible dancer. <laughs> well, at least we know something that yeah. some other people won't know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, you started quite young um, uh, in magic. Yep. Who, or shall I say, what started you in magic when you were only 14 years old? I think, well, I was doing, I was uh, at the Australian Theatre for Young People, ATYP in Sydney, which was like an acting school, and I was learning magic, and one of the acting tutors did some magic tricks. I was like, oh, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And through that, I met a magician who took me under his wing, and I was just fascinated by the art. I was, like, I've always loved cards, mm -hmm. you know, always at our Christmas parties, you know, where there's, you know, hundreds of people there there would be people playing cards always like a group of old uncles you know playing cards in a corner I was like oh, it was really fascinating so uh -huh. that was always something where I was like oh I want to do something with that and I just yeah I've always loved playing cards so that's where the magic took hold from I think for me uh, you mentioned the uncles obviously yep. with a surname like Galia you are Maltese yeah, or Galia yeah. well that's what I mean like when I first went to Malta I was like oh I've been saying my name wrong all this time <laughs> no, it's Galia it's Galia yeah. uh, what about your family like um, telling them that you want to become a magician well it probably works out exactly as you think it happened. <laughs> Bloody magician! <laughs> it's what it was. Look, I think anyone's, any parent is concerned anytime their child wants to do something out of the ordinary. And, uh, you know, my, it was no different for my parents as well. You know, my mum was super supportive. My dad was wondering, you know, how you're going to make a living and look after yourself, which is fair. But if I had a kid that came back and told me they want to be a magician, like, I'd be concerned too. Uh, yeah. It's not a... It's not a path where you're like, oh, they'll be able to make a good living mm -hmm. for themselves and be able to make it work, unless you're kind of in a top percentile. It's hard. And, you know, it's a, it's a freelance kind of life. You, right. you know, you've got to make your own work. There's no, it's not like, a, you know, even as an actor or a musician, like people want to hear music and they mm -hmm. want to, you know, they need actors. No one needs a magician That's <laughs> for, right. for anything. So you have to kind of create that world yourself. James Peck needed a magician for his first wedding. Yeah. So how did you know that at 18? I, I was... I got a call, it was just like from a regular agency that I think got a gig for this, you know, high profile thing. We weren't even told what it was. So I arrived uh, at this secret location to be picked up and, you know, I had my magic kit. I was, you know, young and excited and I got there and then every, you know, celebrity and their dog was there. Um, and it was an amazing, you know, an amazing evening. Was you know, that a bit a overwhelming at 18 years old? Being... Uh, no, I think my bravado and, you know, sense of self was way too <laughs> ahead of what it should have been. It far outweighed my talent at the time, I think. <laughs> Now, um, in 2002, yep. you were the Australian Close-Up Magic Champion. Yep. Tell us more about that. Um, so every every two years, there's like an Australian Magic Convention, uh -huh. and what you know, it's basically magicians get together and they you know all judge each other, and there's a competition where the close-up competition, which is basically like the magic that you do, um, that's just like the people in front of you as opposed to the big stage uh -huh. things. And I won it um, from that with that card trick that you may or may not have seen uh, called 673 King mm -hmm. Street which is the one where I tell a story the one that was on Ellen and all those things and that's what I wanted with so it was super exciting to be able to do that. As you mentioned this um, award-winning routine yep. really has not only been um, uh, shown on YouTube yep. and it's featured on um, Ellen DeGeneres yep. as well has that become part of your um, routine now? Yeah I think it's like a almost like a hit you know a hit song uh, for lack of better words of you know something that's taken me everywhere um, I've been very lucky that you know for some it's really odd like sometimes I'll bet hired for an event like literally just to go do that trick which is pretty right. amazing to well, be able to You've got to get paid just for that that's fine. Well, yeah I was, bottom, I was like oh really that's all you know it's exciting to yeah. be able to do it so you know I've been very lucky and had a lot of a success of a trick that you know is basically based on you know someone else's card trick you know story routines of you know long been in the magic repertoire of mm -hmm. magicians you know for decades um, so it was just like I don't know something hit with an audience and it, you know, it seemed to work really well for me. Speaking of audiences, you mm -hmm. know, you've headlined um, uh, venues in America, mm -hmm. let's say Hollywood and Vegas yep. and here in Australia, New Zealand, Japan. Yep. Um, uh, what particular audience did you find hard to entertain? I think when I first went to America, I was worried that they wouldn't get, you know, your humour and those things. But they completely did like you know I was first working cruise ships and you did cruise ships in different countries yeah. and you'd wonder oh will they get this when I went to Japan I learned how to you know speak Japanese or at least really? my routine in Japanese wow. like that's kind of, I, I could order food and speak in, and do my show that's all I could that's do it. if you ask any question outside uh -huh. that realm I had no idea what was going on so, so I but, but at first I was like oh, well they're not going to get that this is funny but they absolutely do like you know if it's structured in a way that makes sense the comedy makes sense um, if you you know if you do your job properly
Tell us more about Poof, The Secrets of a Magician. Yep. You wrote and composed the music yep. for the show yep. and I'm going to be honest, I was totally surprised to see you sitting down at a piano um, and playing the piano and singing. Yeah. So tell, tell our audience more about the show. Well, Poof, Secrets of a Magician came about, like I had I'd started to write this show um, which had all these, you know, comedy songs and, and things throughout it um, quite a while back. But then I got busy doing uh, a diff the Band of Magicians show, mm -hmm. which was myself and, you know, three other magicians. Yeah. And we went around to Las Vegas and all around the world with that show. And I was like, oh, I want to get back to what I like, you know, do my, just me on stage. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd never put the piano. I've been playing since I was 14 years old. And, um, oh, sorry, no, since I was six years old, I was playing the piano. That's when I started in year two. I thought, well, this would be a really cool new thing to add, I just didn't know how to do it theatrically without it being an awkward, oh, I'm going to go play the piano mm -hmm. now. So to be able to construct it in a way where it would be fun for an audience, that's what I think took so long. And it's been really exciting to bring those songs to life and, and a new show to life that, you know, no one's seen. And, and as you said, like, it's like, oh, oh, OK. Oh, and you, those, can, you can play a piano, yeah. you can sing as well. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Well, I can sing barely, but yeah. <laughs> no, you did very well, very Thank well. You. you mentioned Band of Magicians. Tell mm -hmm. us more about that. So a while back, I was been living in Los Angeles, and I've got a lot of magic friends, but we would only ever see each other, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at you know, at my house for dinner, you know, yeah. I'd have friends over and then we'd, you know, share all these, you know, stories, but we never, you never get to work with each other. Uh -huh. And, you know, because you're all out doing your own things. Like, right. It's hard enough to get work for one magician, let alone for four. five, right? So, <laughs> or five. <laughs> yeah, well, it was four, but yeah. So I was like, well, why don't we put a show together where it is just us and yeah. we, we combine all the talents of each of the magicians mm -hmm. and maybe it'll be stronger than the sum of its parts. And, you know, it was really successful. We opened at, um, the Sydney Festival and then we did a, a bunch of festivals in, in New Zealand. We took it to Melbourne uh, to Crown Casino here and then it ended up in um, at the Tropicana Las Vegas mm -hmm. um, headlining on the strip, which was, you know, super exciting and thrilling to be able to do. And, yeah, it was a really fun run and I'm looking forward, you know, now to getting back to doing, you know, the solo shows again. What about challenges that a magician has? What are particular challenges for a magician? Uh, getting everything wrong is a, is, is a big challenge. It does happen. Getting, yeah, it happens a lot. Um, you know, we reveal a lot of those stories in you know in the new show, but uh -huh. just particularly like there's just you know. A magician's job is to keep it all together and make it look like everything is, you know, happening normally. Where there's there's so much going on behind the scenes and through your head. While you know you got to make this person do this or that person do that, you're hoping they're going this direction and you've got to guide that. You got to remember all these things while that stuff's happening. Don't step here. Don't do this. Make sure you don't touch that. Don't let them touch this. You can't touch. You know, all while trying to pretend like, hey, what's going on? You know. So there's lots that can you know go wrong. For a magician, but that you know, that's like anyone, I guess. In any art, there's many things mm, that can go wrong. Right. If you focus on those, that's what's going to happen. So you've got to try to make it not. Now, obviously, you are living the dream. Um, what, what's in the pipeline for James Scalia? It's exciting at the moment. There's there's lots of things going on. We've got a. Um, so I'm going to take this show, I think, to Edinburgh and from here, then hopefully end up in the, you know Sydney Festival again with the right. show and um, potentially Mardi Gras midsummer in in Melbourne as well with the current show that I'm doing. But we're about to shoot a pilot for a uh, TV series that I co-wrote uh, with the director Josh Whiteman, who and we based it basically on my kind of experiences and understanding of living and working on a cruise ship mm -hmm. and everything that happens underneath. Um, on a cruise ship. So we shoot that in a month from now. So by the time maybe this comes out, hopefully that'll be um, yeah, around for people to see. So that's a, that's a really exciting um, project that's happening next. And then magically, I, um, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully we'll another see TV happens. series. You know, we just finished one for the ABC, um, which I think people can watch um, on iView or at least get it um, uh, on ABC. It's called Best Trick Ever. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens next with that. So, actually, mentioning TV shows, yeah. you've been on quite a few, yeah. but there was one particular TV show that things didn't go right at all on the Discovery Channel. Oh yeah, tell yeah, us I more about I that. Nearly died. <laughs> that's, that's oh, nearly that's happened. that's big. Yeah, I was. Um, we, the, the basis of the show is that it was um, magic and science, and that, you know, it was using magicians uh -huh. to use science tricks to you know to make magical things. Um, and there was this one trick where I was hoisted 50 feet, you know, from the air, and um, the, the you know the science was supposed to happen and save you halfway, except someone pressed something incorrectly, Aww. and I fell 50 feet Aww. onto a metal scaffolding. Um, yeah, and then went straight to the hospital. I was fine, luckily. Um, Lucky. Yeah, I was, but. Um, yeah, it wasn't like that on the day, that's for sure. Like my, yeah, it was, it was not a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
let's uh, let's end up um, on some humour. I sure. know humour is very important sure. to you, and sure. I know that you had a collaboration with your brother yes. Julian Galea. Oh, Tell yeah, us more about that. Yeah, so Julian. <laughs> yeah, so my brother. Well, we've grown up, you know, around you know Maltese family uh -huh. uh, our whole lives, and we've got you know just like the typical Maltese uncles that you know just simply you know just talk with one another, and we can't stop laughing at them. And I was like, oh, we should do something with that. So Julian wanted to do something. He's like, let's just go around in the car and talk like our uncles talk. And it was just a bit of impro um, as we started. And then it turned into this thing, and it's called Brothers from Malta. You can catch it on YouTube. You should go look at the channel. Um, and if you have any Maltese family members or people in your life that are, I think you'll get an absolute kick out of it. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to give us just a bit of a taste of the skit now, now, now that we've mentioned it. You have to be in the moment it. to be able to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so, come here. <laughs> come right here. So this is what would happen. We would be in. <laughs> no, 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 you're all right. Oh, very good. Thank oh, you. Yes, good. So this is Julian. <laughs> Ali, it's, it's not Julian. Ali, not anymore. We're going to put on the show. On oh, the show. show. Hey, all right. All right. All right. What do we say, man? I don't know what we say. What can we talk about? The graffiti is not very nice, though. Bloody no. get rid of it. No, <laughs> get rid of it. It's not very clean. Paint it white. Get Julia in. Paint it white. Bloody That's nice, all you white. need is one colour. One colour. Everything. Under a coat, not very good. In fashion forever, white. Always good. I always tell Black them white. Black or white. That's right. <laughs> that's white. Oh, that's a good one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was uh, oh, Brothers, gosh. Julian and uh, James Galea. James, thank you no so very much for no, your time today. No, thanks very much for having me. And thanks to all the, uh, the watchers for watching. And I hope they can, you know, check out some more things and, you know, and follow us along the way. JamesGalea.com. Thank you.